Welcome to MasteringInLogic.com's quick tips, no-nonsense random tips that I think you might find useful. Maybe. In recent years, Logic Pro X has added the very powerful retro synth to create all things, well, retro-y, and alchemy, the Swiss army knife of just about any sound and tone shaping goodness you can think of. But Logic's older, much-loved, ES2 is still a powerful Logic synth perfect for creating rich, warm, and big sounding pads. In this quick tips, MIL has a paddy with the ES2. So join me as we explore this great plugin by Logic and discover how to create a rich modulated pad that will fit perfectly with our dirty bass that we created in the last Logic Pro X quick tips. If you've not seen the video, check it out now. For this lesson, I've already created a synth sound in advance, but I'm going to show you the basic principles of starting a vanilla patch that can quickly be tweaked into something all of your own. So we're going to create a big pad that has plenty of movement, width, and overtones, giving it a modern pad sound. We're not going to create anything slow and meandering. This is all about being big and bold without taking over the track. Creating your own sounds is not just fun, but is a great way of producing something that's unique to you and your sound. And I highly recommend you dive in and get creative. But first, I'm gonna show you how to get started. So I've loaded a fresh version of the ES2, and I'm gonna show you how to set up a vanilla patch. Pads respond well to sawtooth waves because they are harmonically rich and have lots of overtones. So sawtooths are a good starting point if you want to create a big pad and Logic's factory default automatically loads three sawtooths. Triangles and square waves are great if you want a thinner sounding pad, which is perfect for a busy mix. But for us, we're gonna set up a sawtooth pad. First off, and this is all down to personal taste and the needs of the track, I like to use all three oscillators and set the pitches to different octaves. Oscillator 1 is left in its default pitch, oscillator 2 is an octave down, and oscillator 3 an octave up. To modulate and thicken the sound slightly, I would recommend setting the fine tuners anywhere from plus or minus 3 to 10 cents. This will add richness and beef up the sound. As sawtooths can have a lot of high frequency harmonics, it's always important to set the filter correctly so it doesn't take up all the space in your mix. But to get started, I like to open the filter up completely and then tailor it once the basic sound is underway. In this case, I'm using filter one in low pass mode. Once I've set the waves pitch and the filter is open, I add a touch more color by increasing the analog dial to taste and selecting the unison button, adding instant bigness. It effectively doubles the number of oscillators. Finally, if I know I'm gonna be playing chords with multiple voices, I like to increase the voices dialog from four to 16. This means all notes will play together without issue, even if I have set long decays blending into each other. Okay, so there's our basic sound, let's check it out. So that doesn't sound too bad, but it's far from finished. The next thing to consider is how the pad will evolve over time. I want it to have movement, but retain a degree of punchiness. So how do I go about doing that? I'm gonna use the envelope generators two and three to add movement. Two will shape the filter section and three will shape the attack and decay of the pad's amplitude over time. Starting with envelope three, all I'm gonna do is increase the attack stage very slightly 
to give a very subtle ramping up of the sound. The decay, sustain and release will be left roughly around the default position. Remember I said the aim is to keep the pad punchy and not all ethereal like a lot of pads are. If I set the release too long, the pad will lose its punch and become, well, a bit of a mess. Let me show you what I mean. Okay, so now we get to the part where we can really shape the sound with filtering. I want it to move quickly over time, so I'm going to set envelope 2 similar to envelope 3, short attack and release, but the big difference is the decay and sustain will be slightly longer to give more energy to the pad part. So here's what to do. Set the router that's feeding the envelope to cut off 1 and 2 to full with the green triangular slider and then bring down the cut dial to taste, followed by setting the envelope. Make sure you do this playing along with the track so that you can hear how it fits in with the music both in terms of frequency and timing. So our sawtooth pad isn't sounding too bad, but I want to take it one step further and create a pulse width modulation pad, and I'm going to do that by tweaking oscillator 2. Logic's ES2 has two pulse width modulation options found in oscillator 2 and 3. They are perfect for shaping the sound of a patch by altering the width of the waveform. This is known as pulse width modulation, somewhat of a mouthful. So what we're going to do is modulate the pulse width modulation by setting up LFO1 to modulate the oscillator 2 wave. Got that? To do this, we need to set up the router in order to modulate oscillator 2. From the drop down menu in the router section, select oscillator 2 wave as the target and LFO1 as the source. Next, set the router slider amount to full and finally hit playback and adjust the rate, wave type and the position of oscillator 2 to taste. Let's do this so you can hear what the effect is. <laughs> As you can hear, the pad now gently evolves and moves over time, not just in terms of the filter and amplitude envelope, but from the pulse width modulation too. It's starting to take shape, but I think we can do one last thing to our patch. Before we finish the patch and move on to plugins and automation, which I'll cover in another video, I want to spread the pad out to the left and right of the speakers so that any kick, spaces, vocals, you name it, can easily be heard in the center of the mix. I'm going to increase the intensity dial of the effects area just a touch to push the pad out to the sides using the ES2's chorus effects. I'm going to widen the pad even further with delay later, but I'll get to that in a bit. For now, let's check out the chorus effect and how it subtly widens the pad. And then let's listen to what we have done so far with the whole music.
Thanks for watching. In part two, we'll cover adding extra plugins, buses, and automation to really push this patch to being something awesome and unique. If you're interested in learning professional audio mastering, why not drop by masteringinlogic.com and grabbing your free guide to mastering by signing up to our mailing list. Thanks again and happy mixing and mastering.